That is what we're gonna do. Look at, oh, 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 oh! He took it, he took it, oh my God. Holy crap. No. I would never use a pet rat for bait. I wouldn't do it. But fish do eat rats, mice, other types of mammals. So is there a way I can do this with an actual rat? So what we did is bought processed rats. These came shipped to me frozen, already dispatched. They were raised with the care of the animal they were going to be fed to in mind. So not only were these rats treated humanely and dispatched humanely, they're gonna be clean, no parasites or anything like that. These would have been fed to animals like alligators, snakes, various types of birds, large things like kookaburra and stuff like that, that you'd see in you know, zoos and aquariums. And we're gonna see if we can catch some fish with them. All right, I think we found our way down. <laughs> Welcome, it's been a couple of days. I'm trying to get down to the bayou. It's very tricky, but I think I finally, coming down this way, I think I finally found a sloping path and not, you know, a 10 foot drop that I have to climb down via vines. Not that we can't do that. Let's try the easy path first. Let's go that way. Stuff like that, just reaching out, grabbing your gear all the time. I think if we can just, Yes, this looks a little bit more manageable. Let's go around this bit. Mostly bramble bush, thorns, thorny vines. I don't know what you guys call this out of the south, but in Texas, people call it bramble bush. Or a briar patch. Yeah, I'm just gonna try to let it cushion our way down. There we go. It's kind of scree running a briar patch. Well, it smells like uh, toxic fumes. The mud is the color of oil. The reflections out of the water in these puddles is rainbow. <laughs> Looks like a good spot to go fishing in Houston. Let's get our rats out. Oh yeah, still cold to the touch. Still cold to the touch, beautiful rat. I actually have a lot of faith in this as a bait, believe it or not. We'll make a few basic modifications to it. You can see it's already bleeding quite nicely. Fish like rats, they like mice, they like small mammals. Anyway, rats uh, and mice and things take cover from birds and other predators they're gonna occasionally take to the water. And uh, that's where they will be encountering fish Let's get him out there. That is what we're gonna do. A little mousy mousy on a circle hook. The reason I'm tying him to the circle hook is not only so I get a better hook set with the circle hook uh, in the proper part of the gar's mouth, but because I don't fish with you know mammals of any kind on a regular basis. So I don't know how it's gonna behave sitting in the water or in the fish's mouth as the fish maneuvers it. I don't want its fur overlapping the hook. I don't want its tail coming back around and uh, blocking the hook point. I'm quite familiar with how fishy baits work. Uh, even amphibians and reptiles I've used for bait, like they're predictable. I have not used mammals for bait. Um, I've used pieces of mammals, but not the entire thing. So I'm going to give myself a bit of separation between the mammal's body and the hook point just to ensure we get that proper hook set. That's better. Uh, he's holding position quite nicely, drifting just a tad downstream, but that's all right. That's all right. All right, fingers crossed. The clickers on my reels are quite loud and I can see them both from this zone right here. So I wanna sit in the shade. Ah, that's quite nice, yes. Nice big uh, rock. That's not a rock, but. Yeah, this is quite nice. Whew. It's practically a five-star hotel right here. And I'm not kidding. Some of the places that I've had to fish over the last five years of doing this have been absolutely psycho. 
So getting to uh, <laughs> sit in the shade on a nice structure like this uh, with an eye shot of both my reels is quite nice. I've got two rats out on two rods now. Uh, it's a little bit more, I'm a little bit more nervous with this because I only have five rats, right? They cost a pretty penny to buy this way. This way, buying them humanely, um, already dispatched, you know, free of parasites, ready for consumption for animals that you care and want to take care of, um, care for, want to take care of. So I only have five baits. <laughs> so I've got two of my five out right now. We'll see if either of those rods go off. There's fish out there moving. I just, uh, yeah, there's another one. They just have to be in the mood for something a little bit different. Haven't had a single bite, despite the fact that I can see plenty of smaller fish feeding on the surface. Uh, nothing larger has taken the bait. Even picked at it, moved it, nothing. And that's part of the problem when you're fishing with weird baits is that your bites are going to come fewer and far between. But uh, we're losing our daylight. The sun's sinking down behind those brush, those giant brush piles up there. And I would rather get home, game plan, go to a new spot tomorrow than sit here and hopelessly, you know, endure more of the same. Okay, I came up that way. I think I want to go through that way to get out of here. Let's give that a go. Normally I cut this bit out of the video, you know, the whole hiking out of here, getting to the next spot, but I'm gonna leave it in. Uh, so we kind of slid down the hill here. Obviously you can't slide in reverse, but uh, this area looks like it's been washed out by a stream coming down off the, uh, the hill. And I noticed the bridge for the pathway back there. And I think we can walk back under the bridge, up climb under the bridge, get on the bridge, walk down the path, around the fence, out to our weird parking zone. That's the idea. As the poet once said, this is where the fun begins. I think we can get out this way. Probably a good number of deceased members of the crew of the Titanic. <laughs> That said that, those are final words. I think we can get out this way. Yeah. Um. Ah, it's so slippery. You don't want to take a fall here. See, the problem is you slip out here and you only fall a few feet, but you catch something like that. You know, I'm gonna put that back down for the next person or for me if I come back. You catch something like that on your forearm, you end up cutting yourself down to the bone. And I have done that before and it is not fun. Oh. Okay. Mm. Oh yeah. This bucket's really heavy. Yeah, like that. <laughs> Just uh prioritize what hand you're gonna drop shit with. That bucket's five dollars. <laughs> These rods are a hell of a lot more, so there we go. Get up this bit here there's the bridge pretty sure that's the easy climb once we get to it all right I keep going so much nasty sharp stuff in here Whew. yeah man Houston is a jungle Houston is a jungle definitely want to go to the left Not much Palmer slope out. Okay. Watch out for stuff like this. Look at that. Step on that. That's ready to go. 
step on that rebar next to it. Oh. Ow. Ah, that's sharp. Right in the eye that was. Every step wants to crumble out from under you here. A lot easier without this gear. That right there, use this, yeah. Good to know, God, this son of a bitch. Get out of the way. Good to know that ravine's here. There we go. Yeah, that was the easy way out. See that fence? It ends up there and we're parked on the left-hand side of it. Kind of a zone I'm probably not supposed to be in, but very far away from uh, anyone who I think will notice. Moment of truth here. Yes, we're still there. <laughs> it's always nerve wracking. When you're parking in areas you probably shouldn't be in. It's amazing how much uh, just tension you hold up just worrying about stuff like that. Because uh, the moment I see the car, it's like, okay, stuff isn't so heavy anymore. Not so tired anymore. A lot of it really is just being very, very worried that uh, your car is going to get towed away. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to keep this shit rolling. You guys see some of the stuff that I normally cut out of these videos. Ugh. Unsuccessful day. Unsuccessful day. Let's uh get this. There we go. You guys can see the blue blankets. I uh lined my car with those so that uh anybody looking in you know, might uh, not be able to see anything straight away. And usually when people break into your car, it has a lot to do with uh, timing. You know, how long do they feel comfortable peering through your windows before they think somebody's gonna see them? The harder you can make that for them, the better. Okay, stuff I don't need. I don't need this knife on my belt. So, the plan currently, all my bait is still good. From a filmmaking perspective, you know, I already have the photographs of the thumbnail done. Uh, so I don't really have to make the bait look pretty going forward. It doesn't matter if it overheats or things like that, or if I chop it up, or refreeze it, what have you. But uh, man, I gotta go somewhere where the bite's a little more certain. Get this bag. Up there, get the stuff where it belongs in the console up there with me. All right. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Um, let me think. Am I forgetting anything? Let's just make sure there's nothing behind us that we missed on the way in. Glass, nails, that kind of stuff. You know, if we miss something by the luck of the draw going over it. A chance we could pick it up on the way back take a tire out maybe looks like we're good Let me throw that out of the way is that is that plastic oh it's plastic okay yeah looks like we're all right let's get out of here let's get home regroup gotta find a spot where i think it's uh a likelier bite i think i know where i want to go but we'll see all right catch you guys later So I decided to come to the more urban area of the bayou to give it a try. It's our mouse, or a rat rather. And the bayou is so low today. Look at this. Let's get to it. Let's have a go. When I 
first uh, thought of this video, I wasn't really considering how big of a bait a rat actually is. Big 30, 40 pound catfish that live in here will eat that, no problem though. I do expect to get some bites from a small fish though, just cause his entrails are hanging out. So if the thing starts bouncing a little bit, I won't be surprised. So in an effort to increase our chance with more fish, I uh, cut the rat in half. So we have half a rat on there now. So hopefully a fish um, of smaller size maybe will feel more confident to take it. See, this is uh, what lies underneath in this bayou. Look at all that. It's incredible in the worst way. Absolute monstrosity of garbage. Everything you can imagine. Everything from car parts to shopping carts, tires, I guess that's a car part, bicycles, refrigerators, dare you say that? I saw a washing machine in here once. Those are railroad ties. That's a baby stroller. Trees, swimming pools, all kinds of, it looks like telephone wire almost. Nasty stuff. This is why I tell people that if you fall in here, you will drown so easily. Because a lot of the times this is just under the water and you fall down, you get your leg caught in that, you are not coming back up. It takes just a second for you to take that breath and you're gone. Nasty stuff in here. Let's go, let's try this area here. I was fishing with somebody the other day down that way and we got a good number of bites real quick, right where it uh, deepens out there. Amazing, you walk, you know, 100 yards away from the most disgusting pile of garbage you've ever seen. You get out to these flowers and it's incredible. Just have a go at this. Absolutely remarkable how pretty these flowers are. But as much as I like the plant life, I'm here for the animal life right now. And I think our best bet for that is over there. Look at the water level out here. Look at this. It is so low. It is so low. I normally don't fish this zone, but the water has gone down so far that uh, the fish are a little bit more concentrated. So for example, there's a deep pool there. There's a deep pool there. <laughs> And there's a deep pool there, and there's a deep pool there. And I know all this because I've seen this thing, you know, dry, essentially. I've been fishing out here for years, so I, I know it like the back of my hand. And in addition to that, I've seen it when the water is almost gone. So the water is extremely low right now, which means the fish kind of don't have much of a choice of where they're going to be if they want to be comfortable and have all the things they need, like food, protection, um, you know, rest from the current, things like that. So low water days for me, great because they become uh, more predictable I've seen a big fish right there maybe 50 60 pounds something picked up the second rod I didn't even realize it I saw the line which was that way start going past me downstream I have no idea what this is, but God willing, it's a fish because we have been out here all day. And, uh, you know, I have no problem with fishing for days on end for a good fish, but I only have so many of these baits, these rats, and uh, I can't keep them good forever. Every day I spend out, you know, they decompose a bit more. They go off a little bit more every single day. Okay, we're on. And good fish, good fish, good fish. Come on, come on, come on. He's coming right at us. It looks like there's nothing on, but he's coming right at us. Lower the drag a bit, because he's gonna pull some. Oh my God. Holy crap. Oh, it's not even huge. <laughs> Look at that, I cannot believe it. Look at that, he took it. He took it, oh my God unreal look at that he took it there he goes look at that fantastic oh look at oh 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 
Beautiful, he's hooked right through the jaw and he's not a monster, but my God, is he beautiful. Let's get him, I don't even have to rope this one. The circle hook is going right through his jaw. He is a nice one for, uh, for his size. My God, he's nice and thick and he is very, very fat. Now, ooh, ooh, there we go. I saw that happening. There's two things I wanted to avoid. Number one, the fish banging his head on these rocks. Number two, the fish, this fish snapping my uh, my gear. He's actually practically unhooked himself. Hang on. He's practically unhooked himself. I was looking, uh, I was looking for my second camera, which is in here, to get this uh, camera shot set up. I just have uh, essentially my own muscle in my hands, my own strength of my hands to uh, try to show them to you. No rope, no net, no line. Um, he threw it, which is good. I don't want him to kick and hit the rocks, which is very likely if I do the whole do the whole arm extended thing. But look at that! Oh, haha. <laughs> beautiful isn't he pretty look at that isn't that a gorgeous animal beautiful fish yeah look at that tail Woo. took a rat half a rat to be precise but i will take it it has been i want to say five days of fishing it's been really rough out here lately and uh finally we got this absolutely gorgeous gorgeous olive olive green gar let's put him in the water I don't know what my my head cam is seeing. Oh my God, I got him on camera. Moment of truth. This is where I'm either gonna scream or, okay, <laughs> we're happy. Whoo. Well, God, that took days. Okay, so the consensus that is Number one, conditions are just not good right now. <laughs> Take the blame off my shoulder right there. Two, fish eat rats. You know, they eat meat, they need protein. Um, they're not always picky, but sometimes they sure as hell can be. And uh, these last couple of days they have been, you know, uh, ideally speaking, they will take a bait like a rat or a mouse or, you know, really any kind of mammal uh, that's small enough in action. So basically ambushing it, you know, um, taking advantage of the moment as it swims by. Uh, the snakeheads in Florida go after, you know, lures like rat lures and stuff all the time. These alligator gar, you know, you could probably get that kind of reaction from them. I have no doubt you could in fact, but uh, it's just hard to see them in this uh, South Texas water unless you go to very specific areas and we just didn't have access to them right now. But yeah, um, I'm gonna call it at that. It's been a hell of a couple of days. I still have B-roll footage to shoot. You probably saw that earlier in this video. And, uh, oh man, I'm exhausted, y'all. I'm exhausted. <sighs> days and days and days for that. And that's part of the challenge when you have such a weird bait. Anyway, uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell, all the good stuff actually doing that actually doing that really does help check out the patreon page if you want to help support the channel also if you want to get a lot of my best locations not just the address but everything you could possibly want to know about not just where they are but how to fish them photographs of them in all kinds of conditions knowledge that you don't get unless you've been doing this for years and years which i have also just loads of extra videos and stuff on there loads of extra videos that are on patreon that you've never seen on the main channel definitely check it out and if you're not convinced just join as a free member you can join as a free member and there's stuff on there that you can uh, watch and participate in for free no money required and if you decide you like it then maybe you know membership down the road but anyway i am checking out of here i've got to get home i am so tired i will see you guys later